Hello, I hope all is well. I just thought I'd do a really quick video on the firmware 10 update, and more specifically, the sort of questions that have been coming up on uh, CPU usage. I think people have updated the unit now to firmware 10, and they're finding that uh, you know factory presets are using more CPU. Maybe their presets aren't loading, so I thought I had a quick look at that and how to fix it. Now, if you're using the factory presets, I would strongly suggest also updating those for the FM3. And uh, to get the new ones, it's super easy. We go to fractalaudio.com. We go to support, download, FM3. And as we can see here, along with firmware 10, there's also the FM3 factory presets that have been updated here, which you can download over here. If you go to the forum, I'll put links to all of this in the description. There's uh, more notes on uh, the update that was made to uh, these factory presets. There's a lot of work gone into updating those to be, I guess, compatible with the new firmware, or at least so that the CPU is within uh, the limits of the FM3. But uh, this is very important to sort of bear in mind when uh, updating the unit, especially if you use factory presets. Now, I don't use factory presets. Uh, I've actually, if I open up my um, preset folder, uh, as you can see, I've deleted <laughs> all of them, but simply because it's easier for me to kind of have an overview of what I'm using for gigs and things like that, and setting things up and just building new presets. So that's why I don't have uh, factory presets. There's nothing wrong with using them, of course. Before we start, I'll just link to a video I made on uh, general CPU saving kind of ideas for the FM3, as you can also apply those here. Now, I thought it best just to give some idea of what's using more CPU to build, say, a standard sort of preset that maybe a lot of people might be using. And uh, we'll, we'll do that now so we have an idea of how much CPU is being used, and then a few things and ideas and tweaks that we can do to remedy if uh, you're using too much CPU in your preset. So for this kind of basic preset, we'll put one together. So an in and an out. We'll uh, hook these up. We'll put an amp and a cab uh, in the middle. Let's add a drive block ahead uh, of the amp. Maybe let's add a chorus just afterwards. Let's add a delay. This is all in series, nothing too uh, crazy, and then a reverb at the end. And then I also added a compressor up front. So the thing here to bear in mind is that, well, wh when you're using, uh, say, a setup like this, there are certain blocks that simply use more CPU. And with the firmware 10 updates, we've been given access to blocks and algorithms that use a hell of a lot more CPU. And depending on how you've set things up, this might be a good or a bad thing. I, for one, think it's a really good thing, which means that you can tailor your preset to use more CPU-hungry algorithms and sounds. And uh, also, in the opposite way, if something uses a bit too much, you can go in the opposite of that direction and also tweak and reduce the amount of CPU certain blocks use so that it can fit on your FM3. CPU wise, of course. So I will note my FM3 is a Mark 1, so it has the least amount of CPU on tap. And so on a preset like this, you know, there's there's nothing too crazy here. We're about 60%. And uh, a lot of the changes come about depending on, for example, reverb, which is a big one, the sort of things that you're doing within your reverb block. If you're a big fan of, say, spring, let's say I'll, I'll change this to a spring reverb, you can see that. It's using more CPU over there as well. And then there's these extra settings that also affect that. So if I increase the number of springs, you'll see the amount of CPU usage goes up. If I increase the dwell drip settings, it also increases by quite a bit. So you can see just by these three settings, it's really kind of pushing the limits of uh, the CPU on, um, on the unit. But to do that, we can just reduce these, reduce the amount of springs, and you see the CPU goes down rather drastically. These are things that I'll leave to taste because, you know, sound-wise, it does make a difference. You know, it will sound different, but that's up to you to what you prefer to use and how it sounds. Again, you know, as great as it would be to have all that extra CPU headroom to go nuts on these kind of effects, 
to be able to uh, make something work within your preset, you sometimes have to make uh, some, well, some decisions or, or concessions, as it were, so that it fits within the amount of CPU you have available. And it's not unlike, well, you know, if, if you're going to a gig and, hey, it'd be great to bring a second amp and another 4x12 to the gig, but it doesn't fit in the car, I think you make that decision rather quick <laughs> as to what you're going to bring to the gig or not. Now, Spring is not the only thing that's been updated. There are some really kind of heavy hitters in here in terms of CPU usage, and Plate is another one that's been updated. So I've just switched to the London Plate, and uh, you can see here we've got these extra you know, controls that we have here. If I increase dispersion, for example, to even 50%, Let's push that some more. We're already up to like 70% CPU usage. And this is with the quality at economy and echo density at four. If I go back down to 0%, it drops way back down to 55%. So these are things that you can look at to kind of tweak and see how they work best for you and how they sound, of course. Now, these things also tie in with the echo density. So if I increase the echo density, it's going to use a lot more. And the same thing here for the economy, normal, high, ultra high settings here. Now, I would say, of course, you know, if, if you're updating or, or increasing the quality in the reverbs, it will use more CPU. And it's a case of kind of deciding, like, what's the more important block within your preset? So in, in my example, and um, right, I'll just save this one uh, real quick. I'll go to my main um, Droga preset, which is the metal band I play in. And uh, we're at like 70-ish percent. And, um, you know, there's a few things in here for me, for example, where they're very important to me. So I like to have ultra res cabs. I'm using IRs. I like to have this modern high quality preamp for the cab. And uh, this multi-man compressor, which also uses more CPU, is very important to me as well. And as you can see, I have no reverb block. And uh, the thing is, it's, you know, the base of my tone is, you know, 80% of the time is sort of like a heavy kind of distorted sound, you know? And then I've got a few other scenes that we use here and there where I'm using, say, a delay. I'm using, say, the pitch block for Octava before. And yeah, the pitch block, yeah, that'd also be important. And well, I have a clean scene and as, as great as it would be to sometimes have, say, a reverb block uh, on, say, this preset, I simply don't have the CPU. And uh, the way around it is simply, well, you know, I've just used a second delay block, which doesn't use too much CPU at all. It's maybe like 1% to 3%, if that, that I've placed, in this case, before the amp and the cab. And then by using, say, two delays, you can get this idea of spacing and and get this kind of, like, atmosphere going. And for the, I've tried to time it, I think uh, on like, you know, a 40, 45 minute set that we might do, I'm playing clean for maybe 35 seconds of that. So is it worth kind of sacrificing stuff uh, just for that, especially in these kind of kitchen sink style presets? Not for me in any case. And yeah, there are other ways around this, of course, I could make a preset per song where I could say move things around to have that space. But typically, this is a setup I'm using and that's one of the concessions that I've made. I'm not using reverb and I've found other ways around it so I can get that kind of vibe without the CPU usage, if that makes sense. So back to the preset that we just made. So we had a look at the reverb block and within the reverb block now as well, we also have pitch shift which is a really cool way of basically adding shimmer to any reverb that you use. And this also uses more CPU. If I add the mix in here, even to 100%, you know, we're adding an extra 5% to uh, that reverb block that's selected. And that might differ somewhat depending on uh, which reverb type you've got selected. But in essence, this is saving us CPU so in that we don't need to say add a plex delay block separately just to get that kind of shimmer effect. So if I add a plex delay separately, you can see already we're adding an extra 10% or more of CPU. If I go to Econo Shimmer, 
you know, that's, that's quite a lot of extra CPU being used that we can now save in that we no longer need to use a Plex delay. And then we can use uh, the pitch shift within the reverb block to get those kind of shimmer tones instead. Now another block that has seen kind of CPU usage increase is like the compressor block. And again here it also depends on the uh, compressor that you're using. So some of these simply use more CPU. So we're hovering around the 60% mark with the modern VCA. JFET is 61, 62. Take some of these others and it's less, you know. Dynamic Comp is around 60%. And some of these other ones, you know, they're less than the 60%. So it really depends on the sort of compressor you're using, but these are also things that you can kind of mess around with and, and use and see what suits you best. Personally, I've been using the analog compressor just a lot because it simply works and sounds really good in front of an amp. So that might be something to uh, consider when uh, further tweaking your presets to use less CPU. So there you go, I hope that was useful and a decent overview on the sort of what's going on under the hood per se in terms of like CPU usage and what you can do about it. The thing is, you know, like I said before, sometimes you have to make certain concessions to make your preset work within the limits of the CPU. And thankfully there's a lot of things, a lot of parameters that we can tweak to bring things in line with the amount of CPU we have on tap. And also in the other direction, if we have that CPU headroom, we can kind of go nuts on those sort of settings and really kind of make the most out of that. You know, as an example, imagine you're doing, say, just, you know, some kind of uh, jazz gig where you have only these blocks and you want the best kind of jazz tone possible. Just taking this as an example, you know, you might be playing to use some stereotypes, some kind of semi-hollow guitar and you want the perfect kind of clean sound. Well, because of the CPU headroom, we can really kind of push things in terms of, you know, the, the reverb. We have all this uh, headroom suddenly that we can suddenly use. And in that case, you know, the reverb is maybe crucial, you know, so we can really push the echo density. We can even set it to ultra high on the reverb. We can push the dispersion right up, you know, and we're at 70%. And we've just got, you know, compressor block, amp cab, reverb, and that's it. And the reverb itself, you know, if, if I uh, if I shunt this now, you know, it's at 70%. That one block is using like 45%, uh, if my maths are correct, you know, 43-ish percent of the CPU, which is massive. But, you know, that's an integral part, or that's a big part of the actual... Uh, bass tone that's been used for the whole gig. So having that option now, I think, is a really good thing. In any case, thanks a lot for watching. I hope to see you in the next video. Take care.